My name is Keith Komalovich, and along with Josh Ferguson, we'll be discussing rheumatic heart disease for ME4930 class at Clemson University, Cardiovascular Biomechanics. Rheumatic heart disease is a serious condition in which the tissue of the heart valves are permanently damaged during rheumatic fever episodes, hindering the heart's natural functions. Rheumatic heart disease was previously a much larger concern in history before the current advancements of antibiotics today. The first step in developing rheumatic heart disease is the introduction of streptococcus bacteria in the patient. This bacteria causes a respiratory infection commonly known as strep throat. Strep throat can easily be diagnosed and treated with antibiotics and usually is in today's developed world. If strep throat is not properly treated, the inflammatory disease known as rheumatic fever can develop in two to four weeks after strep throat. Rheumatic heart disease is characterized by the permanent damage of the heart tissue due to rheumatic fever development. The symptoms of strep throat are very noticeable in patients. A doctor can easily detect the presence of streptococci bacteria in a patient by swabbing the patient's throat to perform a culture. Some of the common symptoms of strep throat include swollen and sore throat, swollen tonsils, swollen lymph nodes, a low fever and associated chills, headaches, and on rare cases, nausea and vomiting. If strep is untreated, Rheumatic fever can develop. Some of the most common symptoms of rheumatic fever include a higher fever than strep throat, swollen and painful joints, nodule lumps under the skin, as shown in the picture on the slide on the right, red and raised rash on the torso, including the arms, chest, and back, uncontrolled spasms and movements of the muscles in the face, arms, and legs, and patient's general feeling of weakness. The exact biological mechanisms of the rheumatic fever causing heart damage and rheumatic heart disease are not explicitly known today. Heart damage is commonly thought to be caused by inflammatory autoimmune responses. Rheumatic infectious strains contain specific antibiotics that interrupt the natural chemical reactions in heart tissue. The mitral valve is the most commonly affected valve at 70% of rheumatic heart disease patients. 20% of rheumatic heart disease patients experience damage to their aortic valve, and 10% of patients experience damage to the tricuspid valve, but damage to the tricuspid valve always is associated with mitral and aortic valve damages as well. This chronic inflammation of the heart tissue causes damage to the valves. Most permanent damage to the heart occurs 2 to 10 years after the initial rheumatic fever episodes. The most common damage mechanism is a stenosis, or the narrowing, of the mitral valve. Rheumatic heart disease is the cause of 99% of all mitral valve stenosis in adults in the United States today. The stenosis in the mitral valve causes the pressure in the left atrium of the heart to be higher than normal as blood flow to the left ventricle is inhibited. Rheumatic heart disease infectious damage can also lead to a regurgitant aortic valve in which blood can flow backward from the aorta to the left atrium of the heart. Research professionals are still not sure why certain parts of the heart are more commonly affected by rheumatic heart disease as the tissue of all the valves are the same. If a patient's stenosis or regurgitation becomes severe, surgical operations may be recommended by a professional. As you can see in the picture on the right, the inflamed areas of the heart are most commonly on the patient's left side as the most affected areas are the mitral and aortic valves. Some of the most common symptoms associated with rheumatic heart disease are shortness of breath, especially while the patient is active or laying horizontally, general chronic chest pain with the patient, an increased heart rate, a heart murmur, heart palpitations, and any other symptom associated with rheumatic fever previously discussed. There are five primary methods to diagnose rheumatic heart disease. Echocardiograms use sound waves to check the heart's chambers and valves. The echo sound waves create a picture on a screen as an ultrasound transducer is passed over the skin overlying the heart. This can show any damage to the valve flaps, backflow of blood through a leaky valve, fluid around the heart, and heart enlargement. It is the most useful test for diagnosing heart valve problems. 
An electrocardiogram is when the strength and timing of the electrical activity of the heart is recorded. It shows abnormal rhythms, arrhythmias, or dysrhythmias, and can sometimes detect heart muscle damage. A chest x-ray may be done to check a patient's lungs and determine if the heart is enlarged. A cardiac MRI is an imaging test that takes detailed pictures of the heart. It may be done to get a more precise look at the heart valves and the heart muscle. And finally, blood tests may be looked to look for an infection or inflammation. There is currently no known cure for rheumatic heart disease, but the most effective way to reduce the risk of rheumatic heart disease is by preventing it. This is done by preventing the development of rheumatic fever, using antibiotics to treat strep infections, and using anti-inflammatory medicines to reduce inflammation of the heart. However, once rheumatic heart disease is developed, heart valve surgery can be performed to manage the symptoms associated with rheumatic heart disease. Rheumatic heart disease is the most common type of heart disease for young people. It also disproportionately affects those in poorer regions, even those in developed countries. This is most likely due to the fact that preventative treatments are not as accessible to poorer individuals. This is a problem that many health organizations around the world are trying to fix. As of last year, 33 million people suffer from rheumatic heart disease and more than 300,000 people die annually from complications due to RHD. Although many people still suffer from rheumatic heart disease, global death rates have decreased over the past 25 years. The global health research community has identified four research challenges to help reduce the prevalence of rheumatic heart disease around the world. The first challenge is translating what we know already into practical rheumatic heart disease control. This means improving uptake of proven RHD control strategies around the world, developing new approaches to integrating centralized control programs with primary care and with overall chronic disease care, using rheumatic heart disease registers to understand disease outcomes, determining how to improve the delivery of secondary prophylaxis. This means understanding determinants of adherence, trials of new strategies to improve adherence, developing ways to monitor quality of benzophilin penicillin G, and developing implantable penicillin. This challenge also involves determining the effectiveness of comprehensive programs for rheumatic heart disease control, and determining the burden and economics of rheumatic heart disease and its control, and the role of cardiac surgery for rheumatic heart disease in developing countries. Challenge number two is how to identify people with rheumatic heart disease earlier so that preventative measures have a higher chance of success. This means the standardization of echocardiographic screening for rheumatic heart disease, developing evidence-based diagnostic criteria for rheumatic heart disease, determining the significance of subclinical carditis, and determining the cost-effectiveness of screening and making it more practical and affordable. Challenge number three is developing a better understanding of disease pathogenesis with a view of improved diagnosis and treatment for acute rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease. This means determining the immunology of acute rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease and understanding how genetics plays a role in the development of these diseases. And finally, challenge number four is finding an effective approach to primary prevention. This means developing a vaccine for rheumatic fever, determining the role of primary, primary prophylaxis of streptococcal sore throat, and determining the role of controlling skin infection to preventing the disease. In conclusion, rheumatic heart disease is a serious medical condition that damages heart valves and can cause death. It is caused by strep infections that lead to rheumatic fever, which then develops our rheumatic heart disease. It is the most common heart disease for young people. It is preventable if its causes, strep throat and rheumatic fever, are treated early. Once rheumatic heart disease is developed, treatments to manage the symptoms are available but there is currently no known cure. And finally, the global health community has identified four research challenges to help reduce the prevalence of rheumatic heart disease in the coming decade.